we're going to take a look at the uh, fruit trees in the yard and we got our damson plum and the flowers are pretty much done you can see all the petals have pretty much fallen off let's go check out the uh, the peach tree we got some beautiful pink flowers on it just amazing we had all of three peaches on this thing last year I think we're gonna have a ton this year I haven't been the best with pruning this thing and it's kind of a bit of a hatchet job but uh, yeah a little bit late in getting things pruned although I need to get some of the dead stuff pruned off but it's just gorgeous the bees are loving it and we have the bosque pear which is in full flower today I think we can get a better look around this side Oh, this is going to produce so well this year if we don't get drought and a huge rainstorm which tends to crack them and did it again last year and ruined most of them unfortunately so I guess if we get a dry stretch of weather we should try to uh, water it as much as we can all right let's go check out the apple trees unfortunately I didn't get around to pruning them this year so they're probably going to be a little wild this year but uh, this should be a good year last year was not so good for apples uh, this should be a bumper year and already at least on this tree I can see just an absolute ton you can see the petals on the ground already and they're just beautiful smell so nice and the bees are just loving it let's go see this guy oh there's a honeybee Oh, there he is. He's just loaded with pollen. Busy bees. Look at that. I think I missed the full flowering of the plum tree here. These are the larger plums. And this is the one, these are my favorite. It's, it smells like candy, this one. They're just about done though. And unfortunately, we don't have the, the nice smell anymore. Now this tree is kind of half dead. It's just hanging on, but uh, you can see, I don't know what happened to this, but it looks awful but we have this one which is going to take its place and that happened to the plum tree in the front too they can die but if you let them sprout back you keep one and the root system is uh, good to go let's go see what else is blooming and the current bushes are doing really well this year Oh my goodness, the uh, blossoms have pretty much finished and the berries are already setting. Look at that, eh? These should be ready by usually the first week, second week in July. These will be good to go. We definitely have to make wine out of these this year. And we got the smaller apple tree in full bloom. Hopefully we get a better crop than last year. I don't think we got any apples off this last year. Uh, but the year before was pretty crazy. So I think out of both trees we had probably over 10 bushels of apples. We were trying to give them away. We had so many.
Well, our apple tree is doing very well. We've got quite a few apples that are that are ripe. I want to get the top ones because the birds like to go after that first. Um, get the decent ones from up there. And for that, uh, we use our picking device. I don't know if we can see that very well, but let's see if I can show you guys how it works. Now I see one way up there. Oh, I have to extend this a little bit. And then try and get under it. Oh, this is like playing operation, trying to get it in the right spot. Oh, I think I can get under it right about there. Well, a lot of times you end up knocking it off the tree <laughs> and bruising it instead. So it's careful. This one's right behind a branch. So, ah, I don't know. This is gonna be a difficult one. All right, let's get on it from the side. Maybe from the top. And, ooh, not working. All right. I'll have to turn off the camera and try and get it. And voila, we got it in the bag. The apple just wanted to keep playing hide and seek behind that, behind that, uh, behind that branch. Hopefully there's no bird holes in it. Oh, there's one little one there, but that's not too bad. Decent apple. All right, let's try another one. One that's a little bit closer so I can demonstrate how this works. So you just put it, oops, and then give it a twist if the thing doesn't come off first, which it likes to do. And in the bag it goes. And you can usually do this on multiple multiples too, so into the bucket with the rest of them. Yeah, here's one I picked up from way at the top of the tree and uh, the birds have had their way with it and now it's the rot has spread. So that one's toast. But uh, I think the other one might be uh, it's got a bit of peck marks in it too. Now here's a couple of apples that are almost perfect. It's hardly any scab or worm marks on that one. This one pretty much the same except for one tiny little thing on the bottom. But that's dried so it's okay. All right, we got a nice little bucket of apples. I don't know, we're starting to fill our fridge with them and uh, soon we're gonna have to figure out where to put them. The weather's not cool enough yet to put them in the garage, so we'll just have to uh, start baking lots with them or making something out of them. All right, guys, so we've pretty much stripped the apple tree of all the apples. Um, the birds were getting into them quite a bit so it was definitely time to uh, get them. These are the ones that the birds have been at right here. You can see all the uh, chew marks in it and the rot sets in after they do that. Uh, but uh, we got we filled almost a recycling bin full. Um, some of them are I think there, there's some good ones, but there's quite a few that are all misshapen, which 
I guess would be worm activity and some scab. But overall, not too bad. See up in the tree, we've pretty much, it's just the odd one left. And they're not very ripe, so if the birds want to have at it, they can go for it. Well guys, it's time to harvest what's left of our damson plums. Uh, you can see we've had some critters. I've got broken branches up there and uh, lots of chewed up plums on the ground and broken branches as well. I don't think I've ever had this before, but uh, this is probably the work of of coons, I would imagine. Uh, so we're just gonna get our ladder out and try and get the rest of them and see what we have left. Beauty. All right, guys, well, this is about the extent of the harvest. Pretty piddly. Well, we got our, our damson plum tree all picked and we have filled this uh, recycling bin full. I think we have probably about 60, 70 pounds. But, uh, and that's pretty much, well, I think there might be the odd one left on there that I'll still have to get, but uh, I think that'll be enough for a couple of jars of Damson Gin and uh, Damson Vodka, which is a really, really tasty uh, um, liqueur uh, recipe from England. They love Damsons over there. It's a big deal. Uh, we got a few more damson trees growing around the yard that have grown in wild. We've got this one here, which I'm going to have to prune up. Um, this one by the pond is very large. And maybe I'll try bending over the top branches uh, like I did on, on this tree here. You can see those main branches at the top used to look like that and then they had then they were heavily laden one year and they bent over by themselves but uh, I don't know when this one's gonna bear fruit so uh, we'll just have to maybe help it along so this is the pond in the front uh, looks like pea soup we've raised uh, a ton of tree frogs in here and you can see that tadpole at the surface there that's another tree frog a lot of them have already uh, have already developed and moved on we must have had over 50 or 60 this year getting near time to probably empty this pond So let's go check on the, uh, the peach tree. So this is a Siberian peach. And these won't be ready till uh, Thanksgiving in, in, uh, in Canada, which is the first week in October. And they're starting to look pretty nice, but I'm, getting, I'm beginning to get worried that some of these branches are not gonna be able to handle the weight of them. This one over here especially is getting just, we've never had a peach crop like this before. And these are the most tastiest peaches that I've ever had. The one thing I am worried about is this spot right here. They had a canker at the, uh, at the union here. And this could be at risk of splitting off. That's a weak spot. And there's quite a few peaches up there. 
But uh, yeah, the, the colors coming on them, they're still pretty hard to the touch. So yeah, these are pretty amazing, the Siberian peach. Uh, how long, they're probably, I guess, the most northerly peach you can get. This one's, uh, that one's no good. Uh, what else do we got in here? Oh, they're looking pretty well. There's a few that probably can, that one's not going to amount to anything, I'm sure. And yeah, some of those branches are just getting very, very, I don't know, hopefully they can hang on for just a little bit longer. Some of these small ones, I don't know, maybe they'll do something. The ones on this one seem to be a bit smaller than the ones on the other side, though. This thing's had a lot of... Uh, its days might even be numbered, too. Got some fungus and canker on it. Especially here on the joints. Pretty bad again. And this is one of the other plum trees that has sprouted naturally. So it hasn't bore fruit yet, so hopefully next year we'll get something off of it. Now this is something you don't see all the time. Uh, but, uh, uh, I've seen raspberries come out in September, but uh, never the black raspberries. Just this little spot. Hmm. Very tasty too. So nice. Just this one little spot. Don't know how that happened, but uh, very cool. Now let's see what we have uh, ready. That's ripe on the uh, plum tree. I see one. Oh, I see one right up there that should be ready. These ones aren't quite there yet. And this one looks quite nice. Let's see if it uh, comes off. No, it doesn't want to quite come off yet. Oh, there it goes. Guess it is ready. Perfect. That's decent. Let's go see how the pears are doing today. Oh, they're coming along nice. Uh, I see a few cracks on this one, but uh, I think it'll do fine. Shouldn't uh, shouldn't rot. Oh, that's a decent one too. These will probably be ready by mid-September, but. Uh, we have quite a few this year. This is probably the best year we've done so far. This tree is about 12 years old now. It took about 10 years to get our first pair, so a long time in waiting. I just noticed something uh, a few days ago I was detecting in the backyard and found lots of pennies in this one spot, but uh, here's a if you're digging on somebody else's property, this is the time of year when it's probably not the best time to do it because uh, you can see uh, my plugs are kind of dying here a little bit. Which is fine, it's on my own property. And once the rains come again this fall, they'll, they'll return right back to where they were. Yeah, I found about uh, 12 modern pennies in this area. 70s to early 80s. We know the, uh, the lady who used to live here and I believe that's probably the time era where she had her play, uh, play area out here. The latest penny I found was 1984 and this place was built in 74, so sounds about right. Well, if you recall uh, what I mentioned before about this limb on the peach tree, and of course it uh, 
it broke on me. This thing is, you can see there, all that was holding it on was this right here, and this was all cankered up. But uh, I think I had some help from some critter friends. I think the critters, uh, on top of the weight of all the peaches, I think the critters, possibly raccoons, climbed it and uh, caused it to, the remainder, to bust. You can see over on the tree here. And the pile of fruit that uh, got chewed up and half eaten. I don't know. There's some bite marks there. Well, all the pretty much all the garbages on the street were uh, turned over on garbage day. So there must be a new. Uh, a new family of raccoons in town. So we're gonna set the uh, trap out tonight and uh, just see who's the culprit. We'll elevate it so uh, we don't catch any skunks. And uh, yeah, we definitely can't have that happening. Hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to um, salvage what we have on the branch here because uh, generally peaches even if they're not ripe they'll usually ripen over time so hopefully that's the case because they're still pretty uh they're still pretty hard and green so we'll hope for the best now here's the uh, peach harvest um, I had to quickly uh, harvest these the other night because uh, the raccoons uh, were definitely coming after them again so and they were pretty much ready to be picked anyway so um, you pretty much have to pick them hard because they really start ripening fast right away um, a bunch of these ones are the ones we rescued from that limb that the raccoons uh, knocked off it's amazing the fruit flies there's no bad ones in here, but uh, they know. They know that these things uh, go quickly, so they're quickly laying their eggs in uh, in hopes. But yeah, this is probably the best year we've ever had with the Siberian peach tree. Uh, they were so heavily laden, and it gives me a bit of... Uh, trepidation because it might mean that this tree's days are are numbered when a tree is and there's a lot wrong with this tree there are so many uh, canker problems a lot of the joints on the limbs had canker in them previously and as that that one branch that came off was I knew it was I knew it was weak and it could snap but the raccoon just uh, gave it that little bit more uh, these ones I've put in the fridge because these were the ripest ones so <laughs> to show I had to kind of pull the drawer out of the fridge see there's a bit of apples on the bottom but it's uh, mostly peaches here but uh, yeah pretty nice unfortunately I didn't get uh, the plums before the raccoons got them anyway that's the peach harvest